In this video we're going to look at the energies for the hydrogen atom that come out of the Schrodinger equation. So we have our Hamiltonian which has the kinetic energy of an electron minus h bar squared over 2 times mass of the electron times del squared, the Laplacian operator in spherical polar coordinates, minus the Coulomb force acting between the electron and a proton which is fixed at the origin which is e squared minus e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught times r, the distance between them. And we want to solve the Schrodinger equation h psi equals e psi for psi which depends on the spherical polar coordinates r, theta, and phi. So let's just go ahead and skip to the spoilers and say what the energy levels end up being. So the energy levels only depend on a quantum number n which comes out of the radial part of the Schrodinger equation because for the uh, sphere for the spherical part, the angular part, there is no potential energy and the energy levels we get only depend on a quantum number for the radial part which is n. So we get E of n is going to equal minus mass of the electron times the magnitude of its charge to the fourth over 8 epsilon naught squared times h Planck's constant squared times n squared. So the energy is proportional to the negative second power of n. It is proportional to the inverse of n squared. And then messing around with h and h bar, we can also see that this would be equivalent to another form you might see this in, which is me e to the fourth over 32 pi squared epsilon naught squared h bar squared times n squared. And to remind ourselves, n equals 1, 2, 3, etc. n is an integer, and in this case the integers start at 1. In all of our model systems, we need to remember what the quantum number, what integer they start at, and for this case it is n equals 1, same as particle in a box, whereas rigid rotor and harmonic oscillator both start at 0. So just keep that in mind. And this is important because we can also write it in terms of the Bohr radius, which we saw way back near the beginning of the playlist, which is epsilon naught h squared over pi mass of the electron times charge of the electron squared, I believe there. Which, if we want to play h and h bar games, is also 4 pi epsilon naught h bar squared over m e e squared. And again, that's called the Bohr radius. That's the radius you get when you assume quantized angular momentum in the hydrogen atom and uh, something of what we might expect for a uh, radius in a fixed orbit. Now we're now in a more advanced model. We're saying that the electron can be anywhere in space and can, ob can obey some probability distribution function which is described by psi star psi. So this is a much more advanced model than the original Bohr model, but as you can see we've gotten the exact same energies out from the Bohr model. So then to write that again in terms of the Bohr radius, our energies are minus e squared over 8 pi epsilon naught a naught and again proportional to 1 over n squared where our n is some integer and just so we remember the Bohr radius equals 0 0.529 angstroms and one angstrom is 10 to the minus tenth meters so Bohr radius is in fact an actual distance and this is the distance uh, which it is, which would be kind of, you could view it as an effective uh, radius of the hydrogen atom, although we'll see later why that's not such a good idea to view it in such simple terms there, but for now that's fine. And when we look at the actual uh, wave functions of these, we're going to see that the degeneracy of each level is n squared. So for every value of n, there are n squared energy levels at that individual energy. So let's now, on this side, make a very big graph 
where we plot energy levels for the hydrogen atom. So let's say we're plotting, uh, what should we do? Let's pick green. Sure, green's good. So the E of N going up in this direction, zero is up here. So we have our ground state at N equals one down here, which is at some, which is at, uh, we'll say, negative E squared over eight pi epsilon naught A naught if that's our unit for this and 1 over n squared is 1 so that's that's the energy of our lowest energy state is this here so if you wanted to take an if you wanted to take an electron in the ground state of the hydrogen atom and remove it infinitely far away from this proton such that it was no longer bound it would take the absolute value of this amount of energy to do that so this is the energy of the ground state or the ground state ionization potential of the hydrogen atom then next, 1 over 2 squared is 1 over 4, so going up about 1 fourth of that. We have the n equals 2 state, which has a degeneracy of 4. There are 4 energy levels in there. And we'll see that this is, these end up being the 1s, and this is going to be 2s, uh, 2px, 2py, and 2pz. But that's when we look at the wave functions. For now, we're just talking about energies. So this n equals 2 energy level has 4 states n equals 3, 1 over 3 squared is 9. So if I make some type of estimate, let's say 1 over 9 is about there-ish. How about that? And there's going to be 9 energy levels there. So 7, 8, 9 at n equals 3. n equals 4 is 1 over 16. So I'm going to take my 1 fourth here and cut that into a fourth again. Something like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. You can see this is going to very quickly get unwieldy. This is very quickly going to produce a large number of states, all of which start to get on top of each other until there's infinitely many states which are very, very close to this zero of energy here. Okay, so we said that's n equals 1, n equals 2, 3, 4, dot, dot, dot. Okay, so what does this tell us? Well, we can see that there would be transitions if we had from n equals 2 to n equals 1, n equals 3 to n equals 1, and, or n equals 4 to n equals 1, or any of the higher levels on, beyond that, etc. This would actually be equivalent to the Lyman series that we originally saw when looking at the Rydberg formula way back in the uh, very early part of this playlist. And this was in the ultraviolet region of the electromagnetic spectrum. So that tells you the scale of how big these energy differences are. If we look at the transitions from n equals 3 to n equals 2, n equals 4 to n equals 2, 5, and 6, those were the four lines in the visible, which were the Balmer series. And those were in the visible range of the spectrum. There's a purple, blue, green, and red uh, photon there of those various energies. So that tells you what that energy scale is like. And then um, the Passion series would be from going things going down to n equals 3. And that was the Passion series. And that was in the infrared. So you can see there's a wide variety of transitions which are possible because there's a wide variety of the energy spacings which are possible given these, given these various values here. And it's also uh, worth noting that the magnitude of these separations is such that uh, almost virtually all, you can approximate it as all uh, hydrogen atoms will be in N equals 1 at room temperature in the absence of any kind of other effects like a bunch of photons shooting at it that it can absorb. So these energy separations are very large so almost all hydrogen atoms are going to be in this ground n equals 1 state which you probably know is the 1s orbital at 
at room temperature. So these are these are the different energy levels and degeneracies that we have to work with. So we're going to move forward, look at what these wave functions are, what they mean, and what they tell us about the hydrogen atom and uh, chemistry in more general terms.